rather than using the ratio test to figure out whether a particular series converges or diverges, what you'll often use it for is to find a radius of convergence. So you'll have a series like this one that has a variable in the series, and we want to know what values can we put in for x so that this series right here is going to converge. So our goal here is to find the radius of convergence, um, which is a slightly different question, but the same thing as figuring out what values we can put in for x. So again, we're going to use the ratio test here. And since we're going to use the ratio test, we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus first term to the nth term. And so in this particular problem, what is the n plus first term going to be? Over. Okay. And then the nth term is going to be what? Yeah, it's, it's just this general term right here. So n times x to the n over 10 to the n. Even though we're going to, we're going to, very next step, we're going to, multiply by the reciprocal here to simplify it. It's important that you show this step right here. Um, I will tell you that for my tests and for the AP test, this step right here is almost always worth a point just to set up the ratio. So if you skip straight to the next step, you could still get the right answer and you could still get points for the answer, but you don't get the points for the setup. Okay? So you need to make sure that you, you not only get the answer, um, but you show every step along the way. You show the in intermediate steps and the setup. So this limit here is going to simplify by multiplying by the reciprocal. We get the limit as n approaches infinity of plus 1 x to the n plus 1 over 10 to the n plus 1 times... 10 to the n, and I'm just taking the reciprocal of the denominator here. So 10 to the n over n times x to the n. Just like the last one, we're going to have a lot of stuff that, that cancels. Um, where do you guys want to start? Okay, the 10 to the n and the 10 to the n plus 1, those are going to cancel out, and what's going to be left, and where? Yeah, we'll have a 10 left in the bottom, okay? What else? The x to the n's are going to do the same thing. So we have the x to the n here and the x to the n plus 1 here. So we're going to have an x left there. Okay, what else? So this limit now, in its simplified version, will look like this. We're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of x times n plus 1 over 10n. Now, this limit right here does not depend. Um, it only depends on n approaching infinity. So this x and this 10 right here, what could we do with those? Let's see if you remember. Those are, those are actually, even though x is a is a variable. Um, as far as the limit is concerned, it's a constant because the limit is uh, using n as its variable. So what can I do with a constant in a limit? I know I'm asking you to think really far back, like September-ish. How about just factor it out? So since the limit, um, or since these are not variable in terms of the limit, we can just pull those out front, factor them out. And so what is this limit right here going to be? The limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n. That's going to be 1. Uh, you could use L'Hopital's rule for that. You could 
modify that by dividing the top and the bottom by n or multiplying the top and the bottom by 1 over n. Um, however you do it though, that's going to be 1. This right here is going to be 1. So this limit is going to be x over 10. What does it mean that our ratio, our limit of ratios is x over 10? Keep in mind that this is going to be an absolute series. We want these terms to be positive. Um, so let's just assume that we're dealing with positive x values for now. Um, and what's going to happen, this is going to be centered at 0. But the absolute value of this is going to have to be less than 1. So we know that for this series to converge, the absolute value of this limit here, the x over 10, has to be less than 1. I'm going to put the absolute values on there. So that means, then, if we solve that, that what? x has to be less than, or the absolute value of x has to be less than 10. Now, the question, or the problem says, find the radius of convergence. The radius is actually the, um, the size of the convergent interval. So if the absolute value of x has to be less than 10, what's the radius of this interval here? Yep. So all we have to do to answer this question is say that the radius of convergence is 10. Because all we're doing is we're asking for the size of the interval. Um, it would actually work if x is anywhere between negative 10 and positive 10. Um, later on, we'll be answering the question. Uh, the interval of convergence. So we'll want to know what the interval of convergence for a problem like this is. And in this case, x is going to have to be between negative 10 and positive 10. But what we don't know is whether it's less than or equal to or if it's strictly less than. And we're going to have to come up with other tests to determine that. So for now, all we're going to do is we're going to say the radius of convergence is 10. Later on, we're going to be able to say the interval of convergence is between negative 10 and 10, either inclusive or exclusive of those endpoints, depending on other tests.